Well today, in this episode of BizJet TV, we're going to be talking about choosing the pilots for your private jet. Now this is something that's been talked about a lot uh, recently, also in the airlines, and this is what I want to address today. My name is Fabrizio Polymer, your aviation advisor. Lots of content here on BizJet TV. It's all about private aviation, the world of private aviation, interviews with owners of jets, people that fly the jets, uh, that operate the jets, and lots of content about different airplanes and comparing them and all sorts of good stuff here on BizJet TV. So if you haven't subscribed, I encourage you to subscribe. But let's get into the meat of today's episode, talking about pilot selection, choosing the right pilot for your private jet. Now, just recently, uh, a few airlines have come up uh, with um, uh, a new way of selecting pilots. And one airline announced that the incoming class of pilots uh, in which enrollment rates, uh, there will be an increased uh, enrollment rate of women and people of color to equate those of white male uh, students. So basically they want to do a 50-50 split. Um, so they're going to be selecting pilots based off of their sex or based off of their race. Now, uh, should you be doing the same with your private jet? Uh, now, some people would say yes, in particular if you're setting up a flight department or you're hiring four pilots, maybe you should hire, you know, uh, one uh, woman of color, uh, one white woman and uh, an Asian guy and a white guy, for example. Um, should you sort of build that into your flight department or, or not? Well, uh, in my view, no. Now, I just said no to that. And so probably some of you are going to now classify me as a racist. But hang on here and let me just explain what I'm uh, going to tell you and why. The why is really, really important. Now, as you know, um, I'm a great reader. I love reading, which is hence all the books behind me. And one book I read a few years ago, which has really influenced my life, is this book by Stephen R. Covey called Principal Centered Leadership. Now, uh, Stephen Covey is very famous for uh, the book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Uh, but this is uh, a book that he wrote after The Seven Habits, where he sort of elaborates a bit more on The Seven Habits. And in this book, he talks about principal centered leadership. And leadership is something really, really important. If you're you know, going to be flying around in your private jet, you need to be selecting people with a, with, with a sort of a principles, okay? And if, uh, you know, a white female is best or, or a colored guy is best because the principles are ingrained with them and you like the person, well then, by all means, hire them. Uh, but you need to find the right person for the job and that has to be driven by principles, not by color, not by sex, not by any other type of thing, but by principles. Because this person is flying you around the world. They have to keep you safe, your family safe, your team safe. This is really important. So let's delve into the eight principles of principle-centered leadership that Stephen Covey talks about. Now, the first thing he looks for, uh, or I look for when I follow this, is someone that's continually learning. So are they continually learning, not only in their profession, but other things than that? So that's number one. Number two, are they service-oriented? Because, of course, they're flying a private jet. They're servicing you, your family, your team. So have they got this service-oriented mentality? Third is, do they radiate positive energy? Are they positive? Uh, you know, you think of flying around with some of your guests and whatever. Uh, you know, the pilots are obviously going to be interacting with, with the passengers. This doesn't happen on the airlines, but it will do on your private jet. So you want to have someone that radiates positive energy. Then believe in other people. So you don't want one of these pompous captains that's, you know, ordering around the flight attendant and the, and the first officer and making them feel bad because maybe they had a bad day flying. Maybe they had, the landing wasn't wasn't that good and that. And so, you know, you have to have somebody that believes in other people. Then lead a balanced life. What you don't want is you don't want, you know, pilots chasing women on the beach uh, or, or men on the beach, depending on what pilot you have, or, or getting drunk at bars. Uh, during their layover and stuff like that. You want someone that leads a balanced life. Then uh, someone that sees life as an adventure, because let's face it, flying around the world in a private jet is an adventure. Um, and so they have to have a bit of an adventure uh, adventure kind of mindset and in, in like, you know, visiting new places, uh, seeing new places, experiencing new things. So that's another thing. Then number seven is synergistic. There has to be synergy between them and you and your organization. So uh, some uh, companies like to put their logo on the airplane. They like to sort of let everybody know. They film themselves on their jets and that. So is, is your pilot happy to be part of that or, or not? So that synergy is really, really important. And then number eight is exercise self-renewal. So are they consistently renewing themselves, improving themselves, which kind of ties into number one, which is continually learning. Now, these are uh, eight governing principles that you should look for. But there's a few others that I throw in when I'm looking for pilots. 
And you may have seen the movie or read the book called The Right Stuff. And it's all about when NASA selected the very first astronauts. You know, they had to come up with what's the right stuff. OK, so these eight principle centered leadership uh, things that Stephen Covey came up with is part of the right stuff. The way I look at it for pilots. Another thing I look for is uh, fir and first and foremost is I only when I you know sell a jet to somebody and I recruit the pilots for them, I only look for people through my trusted network. So I never advertise if someone suddenly contacts me on LinkedIn and whatever says, oh, have you got a job as a pilot for me? Because you know, anybody can have a meeting with me for a couple of hours and, you know, impress me. But, you know, what impresses me most is when a friend of mine calls me and says, look, this buddy of mine would be good for the job because I've worked with him for 10 years, blah, 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 blah. I know his family. We've been for dinner many times on holiday together, etc., etc." et, cetera, et cetera. Um, And, you know, this is really, really important. So first of all, through my trusted network. And when I'm going through my trusted network, I'm looking for people with the eight principles, the leadership principles. But I'm also looking for, in particular with the captain, uh, the lead captain, because he's going to be running the show. He's going to be training the other pilots. He's going to be setting the standards. I look for somebody with either military background or airline background because it's more regimented. The training is better. They get more training, more solid training. Um, and so not necessarily in a first officer. We're happy, depending on the aircraft, to hire a first officer out of flight school. Um and um, obviously they have to meet all the, the, the criteria that we, we discussed before. Um, and then you team them up with a captain with an airline background or with a military background. This is exactly what happened to me in my early days flying private jets. I was teamed up with some airline captains and that, you know, when I joined the first airline, I ended up being top in my class because I was used to flying the airline way. Um, and I'd been doing that for five years in private aviation. So that helped me. Um, and so that's that's one thing. Uh, another thing I look for is the ability to think on your feet. And this is really, really important because, you know, things can go wrong down route. Um, what with the hotel, what with the catering, a number of things with private jets or even with the maintenance. So is your lead captain and also the first officer who one day may be captain um, and the flight attendant. Are these people able to think on their feet and are they people that when there's a problem, they think of the solution and they don't sit there and start shouting, freaking out, drama, 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 and trying to talk about the problem all the time and make it a lot bigger. No, we need people that think on their feet, that are proactive. And being proactive is one of the seven habits that Stephen Covey talks about in his other book. So that's really, really important. So when something goes wrong, uh, how do they handle it? And this is a great question to ask someone in an interview. Tell me about a situation when you made a mistake or, you know, something went wrong or something was thrown at you that you didn't expect. How did you react? How did you solve the problem? Um, and that's really, really uh, important. And then the last but not least is, are they well groomed at all times? Um, so do they look after their bodies? We don't want people severely overweight. Uh, we don't want people, you know, with messy hair. Uh, we want people that are well groomed at all times that look after themselves, possibly maybe do some form of sport whether it's, you know, Pilates, yoga, working out in the gym, playing tennis, playing golf, whatever it may be, you know, they move their body uh, and look after their body and they don't stuff themselves when they eat and they're careful on their diet and that. This is all important because, you know, not only if they're well-groomed, it's it's good for, you, for the image of your company and your family, but it also tells you if somebody's looking after themselves. And if you look after your body, uh, it affects your mind positively. Um, and that's another thing which kind of uh, brings into the radiant uh, positive energy uh, that we talked about before. So these are kind of the, 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 the traits that you need to be looking for. So I'm dead against this thing of we have to hire half women or people of color and whatever. If the, 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 the lady meets all these requirements or the person of color meets all these requirements, bring them on. But your pilot recruitment needs to be driven based off of principles and not race or gender. And this is really, really important because, you know, you're spending twenty five million dollars on a jet. You want the right stuff up front. And that's really, really important. So many people, when they talk to me, they get caught up on the airplane and can we get a discount and can we do this and can we do that? And they're all focused on the plane when they don't realize that at the end of the day, yes, the plane is important. But once you start operating the plane, the important bit are the guys that are going to be flying you around, um, the flight attendant looking after you, tuning in, finding out what, what you like food wise, drink wise, et cetera, et cetera and being able to think on their feet and keep this airplane flying safely all the time and keeping themselves safe when they're staying uh, in a hotel downtown somewhere. Um, they know where to go, where not to go to keep themselves safe, etc., etc. These are all really, really important things. So uh, very often people just 
think of the plane and then they hire pilots on the cheap or I had one gentleman I was talking to a few weeks ago said to me I will just hire contract pilots we'll keep the pilot the, the plane in the hangar and then when we need a pilot we'll just ring a few guys that we know that live in the local area and we'll pay them per day and I said that's a very very bad idea and let me explain to you why they didn't want to listen so they've gone off to do their own thing which is fine uh, but I always recommend if you're spending you know money on a private jet you need to be hiring the right people uh, paying them adequately and, and you've got to find the right people they have to have the right stuff I would say that's key and the right stuff is how I've, I outlined it here today so if you want to get more specific I suggest you reach out to me we can get on a zoom call and talk more specifically about your needs uh, you may already have a jet or you just bought a jet and you're looking for crew I can certainly help you with that so let's uh, just ping me an email and let's jump on a call and let's see what we can do. So that's uh, all from me on this episode of Vizjet TV. I encourage you to look at this next video that's coming up here all about, uh, you know, Laura Langmire and her experience with, uh, with private jets and how this helped her uh, to spend more time with her family. Very interesting uh, interview I did and also click uh, the link below in the Ad Buyer magazine article I did about Laurel and her private aircraft. And that's all from Fabrizio Poli on BizJet TV and I'll see you on the next one.